Welcome to another season of The Cooking Odyssey. I'm Yanis Mameledzis, a scientist, a lover of food, and a chef. This year, my odyssey has taken a detour by way of the sciences. With PhD in hand, I've landed in Switzerland, but rest assured, our Cooking Odyssey journey will continue. My good friend Eva Tsureka has stepped in to continue our odyssey throughout Greece. And while I wait for Eva, let's see where her journey began. Our travels bring us to the capital of the prefecture of central Macedonia, which is considered to be the cultural capital, as well as the second largest city of Greece. And most of all, my hometown. Welcome to Thessaloniki. The architecture in Thessaloniki is the direct result of the city's position at the center of all historical developments in the Balkans. Aside from its commercial importance, Thessaloniki was also for many centuries the military and administrative hub of the region, and the transportation link between Europe and Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Israel, and Palestine. In 1917, a devastating fire swept through the city, which destroyed the city's historic center and a large part of its architectural heritage. But it changed the city into a thriving European city center. Lavavika is what remains of the Jewish quarter of the city after the Great Fire and is one of the few places where you can get a feel for what Thessaloniki must have been like before the fire. The area is now home to many restaurants, bars, offices and hotels. Situated in the heart of La Vadica, the Bristol Hotel was originally used as the post office during the Ottoman Empire and was one of the few buildings spared during the Great Fire of 1917. Renovated in 2000, it harmoniously combines history, tradition and the city's modern development and strives to continue the gastronomic traditions of the city. A typical breakfast in Thessaloniki is bugatza, a custard and filo pie topped with powdered sugar and cinnamon that always reminds me of my childhood. Lifkos Pirgos was built by the Ottomans to fortify the city's harbor. Today, it houses a museum dedicated to the history of Thessaloniki and is one of the city's leading tourist attractions and is under the administration of the Greek Ministry of Culture. The museum opened my eyes to a lot of the history of the city. The first floor houses an exhibition called Professionals in the Marketplace. The second floor, and my favorite of the four exhibitions, was devoted to journeys and trade. There, I saw artifacts and texts related to journeys made by the ancient people of Thessaloniki. Located north of the city, at the highest point in Thessaloniki, is the town of Anopoli, which is considered to be the most traditional part of the city, with its small stone paved streets, old squares and homes which feature both Greek and Ottoman architecture. Here you will find the Byzantine fort, the Heptapyrgion, which was spared during the Great Fire of 1917 and was declared a UNESCO heritage site through the ministerial actions of Melina Merguri. Thessaloniki's waterfront and historical harbor perfectly portrays the city's love of both leisure and cultural activities. Here you can find museums such as the Museum of Cinematography, the Museum of Photography, a contemporary art museum, restaurants and bars in the old warehouses, and is also where the annual Thessaloniki International Film Festival is held. But the most special part for me is visiting my mother on her boat whenever she is in town. Luckily for me, she had just returned from one of her excursions and I had a chance to visit with her and some old family friends.
welcome back. And Eva, welcome to the Cooking Odyssey family. It's a wonderful delight to have you here. How are you? I'm fine. I'm very glad to be a member of this family. We're very excited to have you here. And, and of course, myself, very envious that you were able to go on the travel portion of the show. Mm -hmm. And fittingly, the new Cooking Odyssey season begins in your native Thessaloniki. My beloved hometown. Mm -hmm. It was such a great pleasure. I could show to all the crew my city and I could visit my friends and my family. We had such a great time. Well, uh, on today's show, we'll start with a succulent shrimp appetizer followed by delicious eggplant and feta rolls. And we'll finish off with a bacalhau fricasse, cod with a lemon sauce. So let's start with our shrimp. For this recipe, we will need some shrimps. They've already been pre-cooked. I have a lovely sauce here that I've already made as well. It's uh, extra virgin olive oil with chopped mint, and it's also seasoned with some salt and pepper, grated tomato, and some chopped red onion. This is a very refreshing appetizer. Just a few ingredients. It's great to start off a dinner party. Okay? Great, let's do it. Okay. And let them sort of absorb all that lovely flavor in the marinade. And I'm going to get the tomato here and uh, add it all along the plate. I'm just gonna press on the tomato. A bit of freshly ground pepper. And some salt. And now, these have been soaking in here. I think it's time to uh, add them on top of the tomato. And now, we have our onions. And we have this lovely, lovely sauce. You know, it's got a very robust flavor. So, why not? Adding some more. Of course. Do you mind if I use my hands? Not at all. Kaliorexi. Kaliorexi. Mm. So refreshing on the palate. So good. Delicious. And let's go back to the cultural mecca of Thessaloniki. At the market square located in Athonos, you will find handmade items such as baskets, wicker chairs, and handmade items but you never know what you might find before you do your grocery shopping. Fruit and vegetable stands are always in abundance, and sometimes they even let you sample some of their produce. In addition to fresh fruits and vegetables, you will find all types of nuts, choices of olives and dried and fresh herbs and every spice imaginable. The best part about Thessaloniki is how friendly the locals are. They are always sharing a joke or two and inviting people to sit with them and have a drink of uzo or tsipuro, two local liquors. It is also where the local fish market, called Kapani, can be found. What really interested me was a little corner tavern with a unique name that caught my eye. Chef Thanasis of Brothers-in-Law is going to make two appetizers for me today. The first, a modern one, is feta with sesame and honey, followed by a more classic, eggplant and feta roll. The ingredients for the feta and sesame appetizer are sesame seeds, flour, eggs, honey, sliced and toasted almonds, and balsamic reduction. We start by dredging the feta in flour, coating it with beaten eggs, and covering with sesame seeds and place it onto a skillet with hot olive oil, and cook until golden brown on both sides. Remove from skillet, place on serving plate, and top with honey, balsamic reduction, and toasted almonds. Simple and delicious. The feta and eggplant rolls are a nice hearty appetizer and simple to make. You will need one eggplant, feta cheese, tomato sauce, green onions, basil, red pepper, green pepper, pine nuts, mustard, and olive oil. Slice the eggplant into lengthwise pieces. Grill and let cool to the touch. Place feta at one end of the eggplant slice. 
Roll up and place seam side down on your serving dish. Continue with all slices of eggplant until done. In a saucepan, heat the olive oil, add the peppers and saute for two minutes. Add the green onions, then add your tomato, a tablespoon of mustard, and your basil. Stir well and cook up for approximately two minutes or until peppers are softened. Pour the sauce over the eggplant rolls, top with fresh basil and pine nuts. Good food and great friends is always a great combination. In Thessaloniki, one of the most popular vegetables is what, Eva? Eggplant, of course. Of course. And it's the basis for today's recipe. We're going to make these very delicious rolls filled with feta and served with a very nice tomato-based sauce. We need the following ingredients. One eggplant. I've already pre-sliced it and grilled it. Feta cheese. And for our sauce, some green and red peppers. I've already diced those. Chopped green onion. A bit of parsley. Dijon mustard. A balsamic reduction. Some tomato sauce. And pine nuts and we'll garnish off with a little more parsley as well. So let's get started. I'm heating this pan. Can I have some olive oil, please? Here you go. We'll start off with our sauce. Let the green peppers and the red peppers cook off for one minute. Then we'll add in our onion. Now we're going to add in our tomato. Nice mix. And I'd like to season it. Salt and pepper, thank you. I love pepper, you love salt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Balsamico. Just one teaspoon, okay. Some parsley, please. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna add, keep a bit for garnish. And just one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. It looks like I can start with the rolaike. Oh, rolaike, as you rolaike. love to call it. That's how we call him in Greece. It's very easy. I remember how the chef do it in Thessaloniki. You just grab the eggplant, put the feta cheese, mm -hmm. and you roll. So okay. simple. Okay. Our sauce is done, Eva. Mm -hmm. Look at this beautiful color, is that? And it smells incredible. Awesome. So I'm going to add it on top of the eggplant. Careful with it. That's it. Like it? I love it. Okay. We need to garnish it. Mm -hmm. So if I can have uh, the pine nuts, please. Here you go. Thank you. olive oil. It looks exquisite. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Yep. Mmm, what a nice combination. Mm. It's really yummy. It's incredible. The softness of the cheese, the melizzano, the eggplant, and the sauce is very nice. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> now let's go back to Thessaloniki. During my sightseeing odyssey of the city, I found myself on the rooftop of the Electra Palace, which has some of the most amazing views of the gulf in the city. And I suddenly found myself craving a sweet snack. Chef Yanis is going to show me how to make Trilogia Rizogalu, Rice Pudding Trilogy. For the Rice Pudding Trilogy, you will need milk, salt, cinnamon, sugar, raisins, nuts, carrot spoon sweet, rice, mint, honey, and saffron. We start by bringing the water and salt to a soft boil. We add the rice and cook until half done. Add the milk, sugar, and cinnamon sticks and continue cooking until the rice is thickened and cooked well. Let cool and divide the mixture in thirds.
In first third, add saffron, stir well, and spoon into tall glass. Place in the refrigerator for approximately 15 minutes to set. In second third, add honey, raisins, and nuts. Stir well and spoon over first layer of saffron pudding. Again, place in refrigerator to set. In last third of rice pudding, add the carrot spoon sweet and spoon into glass. Place in refrigerator until set, serve, and enjoy. Rice pudding trilogy to die for. Greek fusion is up and coming in Greek cuisine, and I have just the place for some new recipes. Efta Thalassas blends their Greek fusion kitchen with the traditional yet modern design of the restaurant for a perfect blend of old and new. Dionysis of Efta Thalassas has some Greek fusion dishes to show me today. A refreshing skate salad is made with curly lettuce, skate, salt and pepper, green onions, olives, boiled potatoes, olive oil and lemon juice. Begin by hand cutting the lettuce into a serving plate. Top with skate, olives, green onions, potatoes, salt and pepper. Finish off with olive oil and lemon juice. The traditional fricasse of lamb or pork is given a new twist with fresh cod. Needed for the cold fricasse is a whole fresh cod, olive oil, onion, fresh dill, green onions, eggs, white wine, lemon juice, fish stock, and romaine lettuce. In a skillet, saute the chopped onion in olive oil until lightly browned. Add the green onion, the cod, season with salt and pepper, and stir well. Add the white wine and cook for an additional two minutes. Add the romaine lettuce, fish stock, fresh dill, and cover and cook for approximately 15 to 20 minutes or until the fish is almost cooked through. While fish is cooking, prepare sauce by whisking eggs, slowly adding lemon juice and finally whisking in some stock from the fish. Slowly add lemon egg sauce to the fish and cook until fish is done and sauce has slightly thickened. Serve and enjoy. It was finally time to eat and after watching Chef Dionysus, I was hungry. After a little coaxing, he sat down to eat with me. We talked about our favorite spots on the island, his delicious food, and where I was going to be visiting next. Eva, one of my favorite fish is cod, bacalhau, and one of my favorite Greek sauces is avolemono, egg and lemon sauce. Uh -huh. So we're going to combine those two and cook it today, okay? okay. So um, what we need for this recipe is some cod, mm -hmm. a bit of white onion, green onion, some chopped dill, fish stock, romaine lettuce, mm -hmm. white wine, and three eggs and some lemon juice. Okay, so let's get started. I've been heating this pan. If I can have the olive oil, please. Thank you. Here you go. Let me get the onion. Okay, let me give you a spatula. Thank you. Ooh. If I can have the green onion, please. Sure. You want me to add it? Thank you. I think it's time to uh, add in our cod. Mm -hmm. Just spread the cod around the pan. Okay. Some seasoning. Okay. Some salt. Beautiful. And now we're going to add some wine. Let's uh, add in the dill, if I can have that, please. Thank you. You're Just welcome. right in there. And also our lettuce. Mm -hmm. Just add it around. Now, of course, you want to let it soften, so you may have to do it in two batches, right? Now I'm mm -hmm. going to add here. You don't want to overcrowd the pan. Time to add in the rest of the lettuce. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Let me grab those. Do the honors. Okay. Again, these will soften up. Just one more minute. We'll add our stock. Right in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one final mix. Okay. Now let's cover this up. Mm -hmm. And let the bacalhau simmer for 20 minutes. In 18 minutes, we'll get to our revolemono. Now, time to make our arbo lemon. Can I have a whisk of it, please? Thank you. Yeah. We just beat three eggs. Mm -hmm. And let's add in some lemon juice. Okay. As well. Mm -hmm. uh, slowly adding mm -hmm. in some of the broth. Beautiful. And let's add that right in here. Beautiful. Mm. And How nice it smells. And a nice mix. Okay. Give it a good shake. So this is done. I want you to taste it. Mm -hmm. Let's get a nice piece. That's it. So let's try it. Mmm. Mmm. Refreshing. Nice. Eh? Dill and lemon and uh, the Avgo lemon sauce. It's uh, very flavorful. Mm, and very light as well. Indeed. So, Eva, thank you um, for being here, uh, helping me out in the kitchen, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Cooking Odyssey. Join us on the next episode of The Cooking Odyssey, where we visit the Museum of Byzantine Culture, explore a vineyard with one of the largest corkscrew collections in Europe, discover a Jewish museum in northern Greece.